So over the last while, a bunch of people have reached out to me and asked me a number of similar questions when it comes to things like exposure, rating film, scanning, and so on. So I wanted to put together this video just talking about three things that I think are incredibly important to understand when you're just starting out with film. Number one is rating your film at a different box speed. When it comes to this, everyone seems to have their own opinions on over or under exposure and what speed you should rate your film at and so on. And I really think this comes down to experimenting and personal preference. So that's not what this video is about at all. What I wanna do is just talk about the term and really help you understand what it means to rate your film at a different speed and how you go about doing that. So what happens with a film camera when you change the ISO dial, the only thing that's changing at all is that you're telling the light meter inside the camera what speed of film you have loaded inside so that it can give you a correct exposure for that speed of film. So a lot of the times with negative film, especially Portra 400, people like to overexpose the film on purpose by a stop or two stops or sometimes even three. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that in the next point. But one way to do that is to rate the film at a different speed so that your camera essentially gives you an exposure that uh, overexposes automatically. So in this case, if we have Portra 400 and we wanna overexpose every image we take by one stop, a really easy way to do that would be to set our meter to 200 instead of 400. That way, our camera's meter is gonna be giving us uh, exposure readings for ISO 200 film, which is a stop slower than ISO 400 and needs one more stop of light. So if we set our camera's meter to 200, every single reading it gives us is going to be off by one stop, essentially overexposed by one stop. Really, that would be no different than if we just left our camera set at 400 with our 400 speed film, uh, took a meter reading, and then changed the camera uh, setting to overexposed by a stop. So let's say we set it at 400 and we pointed at our scene and it said to use one 1 25th of a second, we could just change that to a 60th to overexpose that one stop. So really it's just a way to cheat the camera into giving you the reading you want uh, to overexpose your film by however many stops you want. Number two is understanding over and under exposure. For a lot of us with digital, we're just used to going out, shooting, coming home, dumping the pictures on our computer and then processing them. But with film, you'll shoot a couple rolls, mail it out to your lab, and a few days or a week later, you'll get your scans back, and your images will just look how they look, and you won't really have an idea of how they got to that point or kind of what happened behind the scenes. Because of this, it can be easy to think when you're working with film, okay, I gotta be super careful with my exposure because if I overexpose a particular image by, let's say, two stops, um, when you get your scans back from the lab, you're gonna think that, okay, that image is gonna be super bright and washed out. We're all used to working with digital, and if you overexpose your image by, say, two stops, uh, it's gonna look super bright and washed out on your camera screen and when you bring it onto your computer. And what we would all do is you would bring that image into Photoshop or Lightroom, and you would adjust the exposure to pull it back down and try and make it look normal. And for the most part, that's kind of what's happening uh, when your film is getting scanned. So if you overexpose a roll of film by say two stops, when those negatives are getting scanned, the scanner is trying to normalize the exposures to make them look as normal as possible. So when you get your scans back from the lab, that roll of film that you overexposed is probably going to look fine. Very similar to if you shot 20 digital photos that you overexposed on purpose, but you brought them all into Lightroom yourself and brought the exposures back down to make them look normal. Where film is different than digital is that film holds up a lot better to overexposure than digital does. So with a digital camera, you might only be able to overexpose it by two stops and get that detail back uh, when processing. Any more than that and the highlight information might just be gone. But with film, uh, depending on the stock you're using, you can overexpose it by three, four, five, even six stops sometimes and still be able to normalize that exposure during the scan and get an image that pretty much looks like it was exposed properly. Now, I'm definitely not suggesting that everyone should just be lazy and not worry about learning how to expose properly. 
but I think it is important to understand what happens when your film's getting scanned because I've had a lot of people message me uh, just kind of confused about sending film away that's been overexposed, um, thinking that they're gonna get scans back that look super bright and overexposed. And if you wanna learn a bit more about this, I've put some links above to some other tests I've done with different film stocks, just seeing how they respond to both over and under exposure. Number three is scanning film and what happens at the lab. We kind of talked about this a little bit in the last point, obviously, with exposure, but there's a number of other things as well that can affect how your image looks. The reality is, is that if you're having your film scanned, it's getting digitized. And during that process, there's a lot of different uh, options and there's a lot of different things that can happen that can affect the final outcome of your images and how they look. This can be super confusing when you're first starting out because you might get scans back from the lab that look completely different than what you were expecting. So for example, you might shoot with Portra 400, um, which is regarded as a lower contrast, lower saturation film stock when you compare it to something like say, Hector 100. And you might get your scans back from the lab and they might be super saturated and super contrasty. And this is because different labs use different types of scanners and have different scanner operators. And there's a bunch of things that can be controlled during the scan that affect the final look of your image. So things like contrast, uh, color temperature, saturation, uh, you can scan for the highlights, you can scan for the shadows and so on and so on. And for this reason, it's super important to find a lab that you like working with and then just ask them a bunch of questions and run a bunch of tests with them so you can really get an idea of all of the different settings, how they look and which ones you prefer moving forward. So basically where I'm going with all this, and I think the most important thing to understand is that a negative can be scanned a number of different ways and it can look a number of different ways uh, based on how it was scanned. So do a bunch of tests, ask questions, experiment, and just really figure out which way works best for you. So in the end, I hope this discussion helps anyone who's maybe curious or a little confused about some of the things that come with working with film. And I really can't stress enough the importance of just going out and experimenting. So if you're new to the medium, grab a couple rolls, go out, shoot some different exposures, find a lab, ask questions, get your film scanned a couple of different ways, and really just try and gain an understanding of how things work. Um, takes a little bit of an investment up front, but it'll definitely make you feel more confident moving forward with your work.